Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to use RDR. Um, if you're using Cinema 4D on a Mac um, or any other 3D software and you've got Octane, um, you can use RDR um, to export and render of insane scales that you'd be able to do, and it's not limited by your computer. Um, so, just to show you that I am actually on a MacBook Pro 16 inch. Um, with a fairly beefy graphics card for this laptop, but um, you know, it's nothing compared to what you need for traditional 3D animation or rendering. Andre Lebrov has got a fantastic video on the RDR network and how it works and cloud rendering, and please go and watch that because that's where I learned a lot of information. This is just my experience of using it over the past two or three weeks, um, and there hasn't really been that much extra documentation, and there are a couple of bugs which I just wanted to iron out and show everyone. Um, because I really think this is the you know the next generation of how 3D artists are going to be able to render on the go. There is a cost involved and I just want to say that this video is not sponsored by Atoy or anyone. This is basically just me um, loving the service, wanted to get the word out and um, try and show you as much information as possible. So um, the process, you need to start with your Cinema 4D file or any 3D animation software of your choice that can use Octane and have the Octane plugin for that software. You then want to create an Orbex file. Now, using Cinema 4D at the moment, there is a bit of a bug, so I'll show you a workaround using the terminal. Um, you'll then check your Orbex file using the standalone plugin. And then once you've done that, then you're safe to then go and upload it to RDR. Um, go through go through that, um, and I'll show you that in a bit more detail. And then go down and download those files. At the moment, you can only, there's a weird way of downloading it, so I'll show you a different workaround as well. And then once you've got your files, you're then able to take that into any post-processing software of your choice. So After Effects is usually the default one, but um, yeah, I'll just take you through the entire thing. But this is essentially what we need to do. There's a lot of steps, please stay with me, um, because if you do, then you'll be able to do this too, because it took me a while to figure this out. <laughs> so in Cinema 4D, I've got my finished file, which is um, just a simple, um, animation, let me just pause this, it's just a simple animation of a ring falling down and swinging back up again and a ball jumping through it, great. All of the things in your scene need to have proper tags so just make sure everything down here is correct. I've actually got a duplicate thing here so I'm just going to delete that and what else do I have? There's using r and you can only use one camera which is a little bit of a drawback, it doesn't have the takes feature um, so you'll have to do this for each scene that you wanted to create, but luckily I just have a static shot because this is going to just be a 76 frame loop, I think. So for this, I don't need that second camera here, so I can delete that. Just going to check all my light tags, and if you have any dynamics, you need to bake them. So I'm just going to check if these are baked, and uh, just bake objects. Yep, that's fine, and just check if there's anything else that needs baking. I don't think there is. So. Now that we've got this, we then want to check our render settings. So first, I'll go into here and just make sure my frame rate is the same as my project, which it is. This is the width and height that I would like it to be because I'm going to be posting it to Instagram. Um, yep, awesome. So once you've done that, then go in and then check your Octane settings. Now, this is what I usually use just to kind of just do some look developments, but Typically, this is what I'd leave it at, and if I wanted to render something ridiculous, um, I wouldn't. So why don't we try something ridiculous? So on a laptop, I'm just going to go 2000, and I want the diffuse depth of 20, specular of 20, and scatter depth of 20. And if I click render, obviously nothing's going to happen, but it will tell me how long it's going to take. So it's going to take me about 20, 20 seconds per frame to try and do that. I'm just going to keep that there for reference. So I'm just going to pause this. And so once you're happy with your scene, you then need to try and export an Orbex file. And there's two ways of doing this. So you can go up and you can go cloud just on here and click send scene. Now what that will do is tell you where do you want to save your file. So I'm going to save it in tutorial and I'm going to call it tutorial save Orbex. But can you see how there is a delay in the viewport as these frames are being written. Now unfortunately this delay also appears in the main file which I will show you now. So once you've exported an Orbex file, Octane's going to try and launch itself and it will 
give you the default setting. So I'm just going to load in that file. Um, where is it? And it's called tutorial. So if I just go and um, in order to get anything to show in the standalone, you just need to click on the render node here, just or just the node that's at the bottom, I think it's usually the one, the one that comes off the path tracing kernel. So if you click on there, but if I just scrub through on here, you'll see that there's nothing updating. I mean, these, these frames are, but you'll see how, if as I go through, so frame six, there you go, so something's just moved then, it's actually dropping frames. And this is quite a big issue that I've had with Cinema 4D and this plugin. So I'm just going to close Octane X, save, uh, nope. Actually, I don't think we even need Cinema 4D open for this. So let's just close Cinema 4D. Yes, I want to save my changes and I'm just going to quit. So this is, the, this is the method that I wanted to show in order for you to export your Orbex file without using Cinema 4D being open. And so what you want to do is get your terminal open. You then want to go to new finder window and search for your Cinema 4D version that your file is. So Cinema 4D. Once you got onto here, show package contents by right clicking. And then in your contents, you want to get to Mac OS and it will say Cinema 4D. Drag and drop the Cinema 4D into the terminal. That's step one. Then press spacebar in your terminal. So once you press spacebar, you then want to find the file that you would like to create. So I would then like to, let me just move this up a little bit. So I would like my ball ring final to be created into an Orbex. You then press spacebar again, because after everything that you enter into the terminal, you have to press spacebar. You then need to type two things, and I'll put this up on the screen, which is dash no GUI space dash export ORBX. Press space again. You then need to tell this command where you want the file to be saved. So I want the file to be saved exactly where the Cinema 4D file is. So I'm just going to drag and drop that on top of here. I press spacebar and then I press enter. And now you'll see it's going to start opening Cinema 4D in the terminal. And then from that, it will then execute this, which will say export Orbex. And now you can see all of these different frames that have just been exported. And if I just look back over into here, my ball ring file has just been created into an Orbex. Now, if I open with Octane X, now in Octane Standalone, if I scrub through, you can see that every frame has been rendered correctly and there are no drop frames. I'm just going to do the first 10 uh, just for examples, but you can see how powerful that terminal um, uh, export is and how quick it is as well, because it's usually a lot slower when you've got Cinema 4D open and it's trying to use the viewport. And I think it's the viewport that's causing a lot of these errors. So now that we've got the Orbex file, um, I'll now show you how to upload it. Just before we get on to uploading to RNDR, I realized I might have gone a bit quickly. So here's every single step that you need to do with the terminal um, from one to nine, exactly what you need to press. Um, so please feel free to just pause the video if you are doing this yourself, just to make sure you've got the right sequence of all the things that you need. Took me a couple of goes, not gonna lie, to get my head around this, but once I did, um, it's fairly straightforward and you'll get the hang of it in no time. So uh, let's go on with uploading. In r and the first thing you need to do is to upload the Orbex file we just created. So I'm just gonna find it and drag and drop it in. Um, and then it will just start uploading. Um, you need to keep this page open for it to complete, um, but I've already done this, so you can see here. And the next thing we need to do is to create a new job. Once we've done that, we've got a bunch of settings here and you can see that I put 2000 samples in um, last time and that's where it shows up just here. Um, so there's also a couple of show advanced options down at the bottom. So if I just click down onto here, you can see the frame rate. I don't need a noise pass, so I'm gonna tick that off. Um, and you can change a lot of your settings here. So the next step is to then set your PNG or which file type you would like. Um, I don't like having the render pass name in there. I just want what the file is and the number, so I'm gonna remove it. 
um, but if you were exporting EXR you can also export it just down at the bottom here as well. Once you click continue the next step is to set the priority of your project. Um, so this tells you exactly how much money you have which is usually in the top right hand corner so I have 11 euros and 12 cents and you can use vendor tokens as well. I'm going to click on economy because uh, mine's not a very high priority project um, and then at the bottom you also have some required VRAM stuff. I'm not too sure what all of this is um, so I usually just leave it and just press continue but I usually just set mine to economy and then here's where you get to input your Octane bench score. Um, I'll put up a bunch of Octane bench scores for some of the uh, laptops but I know mine's about 100 so I'm just going to pop that in here. I'm also just going to put in uh, 10 from a time per frame even though I know it's 20. It gives you an estimate but it's going to work itself out on how much power you're using on the service so I'm just going to click render job. And now with the power of editing you're going to see a time lapse of all of the frames being created at the same time using the distributed GPU network on R&DR which I think is just incredible. And if you remember from when I tried to click render on uh, the viewport, it said it would take 20 minutes a frame, which would have been probably around 25 hours. Um, but the upside of that is that it's free, but I think my time's more valuable than that. And so at 2000 samples, R&DR was able to do that in about 15 minutes, and it cost about 2.5 R&DR credits, which is about two pounds and 13 pence. So now that this is done, you'll see that there's 75 frames that require a review. So let's click review all frames. Um, and so this is where you can just check if the output of all of the frames is exactly how you want it to, but it's quite hard to assess if there's any dropped frames in this view. So what I like to do is to go back and actually click on play video. So once you've clicked on play video, we'll actually start playing it um, frame by frame and you can set how much uh, uh, intervals you want. This is on 0 0.5 seconds per frame as an interval. Um, but this just allows you to watch back the files or just the thumbnails that um, they've created just so you can see the motion and see your animation and make sure that there are no missed frames. Um, this is where I usually spotted a lot of my dropped frames before I learned how to export the Orbex properly. Um, so this is just a really handy feature just to make sure um, that you haven't got any dropped frames in there. So just done a quick watch through of that and I think that all looks great. And now if I just go back and click on show frame progress, I can then click review all frames and then select all frames because I know that they're all good. So if I just select all frames and accept selection. This will then allow me to download all of the individual frames. Um, so you can see here I've got uh, the PNG and a beauty pass. That's the only one that I have. Um, and so when I click on download selection configuration, you'll see that it gives you a bunch of options, but there isn't a way to download them all as a zip. So if I click download all now, what that's going to do is ask me to change my Chrome settings. So typically what you would do is you would close this and then you'd go up to your settings in the top right, click on your settings, and then I'm just gonna type in here downloads and then search for my location and change the download file. This is what I was doing originally, but it's super slow and it's just really annoying to do. So there is a different way, which is by using free download manager, which you can find just by typing free download manager into Google, click on the first link, and then it will you'll be able to download whichever one you want. Um, so once you've got that installed, um, what you can do is copy links to clipboard and then go into free download manager and in the top right you can see paste URLs from clipboard. Now this will automatically bring in all of the links for your frames from Otoy um, and R&DR and put them in sequence and then the only thing that's left for you to do is to then just select where you want these to be saved. So if I just go up to the top on the right here and just select, okay, I want it to just be on my desktop, put it into tutorial. I think I want to make a new folder in here. So I'll just click new folder, type in ball ring X, actually no, we'll call it ball ring render files. And then just click open and download. And you'll see that it automatically just starts downloading all of those individual files from um, here, um, all of those files there down into the free download.
Awesome, so now that that's uh, downloaded, if I just open Boring and Boring Render Files, click on that folder, you'll see all of my files in here. So if I just open After Effects, wait for that to load, and yep, and if I just set my composition settings, okay. And if I just click on Import File and find those files from RNDR, Tutorial, Boring, Boring render files. There we go. And uh, they're not in order, but that doesn't matter because it will already create a PNG sequence. So if I just double click on that and drag and drop this into here, you will see my animation from Cinema 4D rendered through Octane is now a PNG sequence. Um, and at a quality that you would never, ever be able to get on a laptop, I guarantee you. Um, yes, it did cost a little bit of money, um, and I'm pretty sure I'm only going to be using this for client projects, um, but this was just me testing it out. So um, yeah, I, I know that this is a fairly long video as well. If you have any questions, um, just let me know, um, or if you have any workarounds as well. I know that the um, the terminal export is something that Otoy are aware of, and it's something that they're trying to fix, um, but for the time being, this is the workflow that I have for being able to use RMDR. And if you have any suggestions, just please let me know down below. Um, okay, and that's it. Thanks.